For all of you here, here who were here last week, thank you for coming back, and I hope that it, uh, this class is enjoyable all the way through. And for those of you that have not been here before, um, I'm going to catch us up quickly what we did last week, and then uh, and then we'll uh, and then uh, and then we'll we'll jump into what we're covering this week. Um, so Spiral Dynamics, um, it is a model that was developed by Dr. Claire Graves. Uh, back in like the 1960s, uh, describing the development of individuals, organizations, and societies. Or more simply, spiral dynamics is a way to understand how people think under different circumstances. Um, so why are we talking about this in a Bible class? Um, as I said last week, in order to live out our calling on earth, uh, we must attempt to see others the way that God does, um, as his children made in his image. Um, learning spiral dynamics has been a crucial uh, in my journey of seeing others in his image. Um, as well as understanding myself better as well. Um, my goal in this class is to provide each of you with the opportunity to do the same. Um, also, our world is constantly telling us that there's we's, there's them's. We need to fear the, the them's, and we need to uh, surround ourselves with us's. And what this will hopefully do is kind of cut through some of that and, uh, and help see if there's good at, at people's core, even if they aren't coming from the same place that you are. Um, so just to kind of cover... Some of the color and some of the all the lines and that. Uh, so basically, you've got a center of gravity, which is the area where there's the solid color. Um, you hit a point where there is an awareness of the limitations of that worldview, um, which introduces you to a new way of thinking, and then uh, which then you'll it, often you enter into with a new center of gravity, a new way of thinking, before you do the same and it continues on that way. Think of it. More of like a like a spring or a spiral rather than just a direct line. There's, um, it's just a, a better way to perceive it. That's kind of the, the thinking of it. Um, so uh, as you progress through the worldviews, you don't leave the ones in the past. That you when you move into something new, you transcend a previous way of thinking, but you also include it. It's it's sort of a way to add something to your toolbox, to your way of engaging with the world. Uh, yeah, well, you, you have a new perspective, but you also can move back and forth between those, mm -hmm. depending on circumstances. Um, so it bounces back and forth from individualistic to communal, back to individualistic to communal. So the first week we covered the individualistic archaic, which I'll explain in a little bit, and then it bounces to a communal uh, purple. And then this week we're going to be bouncing back to red and then back to blue. So you're going constantly back from an individualistic way of seeing the world to a more communal way. Um, the individualistic is kind of a, a focuses on self-expression or self-reliance. And the communal is more of a, regroup, a regrouping under a commonality you have with others. Um, and the complexity grows as you go along. Um, this pertains not only to individuals, it pertains to uh, societies, organizations, churches, any group is going to exist somewhere along this, um, though we're mainly focusing on individuals over these four weeks. Um, and this is inf very important. No worldview is better than another. You don't increase in being a better person by moving along. Um, I kind of described it this way last, last week. Um, Think of four generations of a family. There's a farmer, maybe that their son goes to work for a factory, whose son goes and becomes a lawyer, whose son becomes an artist. Each of them are, what they're doing is tailored to where they are and their way of seeing the world, their circumstances. The artist would struggle in the field working just as much as the factory worker would struggle in a courtroom. Each one has different uh, perspective and different giftedness, which uh, pertains to their place. Um, so no worldview is better than another. As we talk about moving along, that doesn't mean that we're moving to something that is better. Um, and that's important to remember as we go along. And, and last week, as I said, if you have questions, please ask them. Um, I want to make sure that this is as understandable as possible. Um, and I know that I'm explaining it my way. If you have something else you want to cover on that, please just uh, shout, out, shout out with those questions. And I'm happy to get Got further. a little problem with that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a uh, child of a cold. Okay. I'm fiercely fiercely anti-communist. Okay. okay. I do not believe that socialism and Marxism mm -hmm. is a good world view. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. See, so okay, so you don't necessarily need to agree with where that other person is coming from, but seeing the 
uh, heart behind where they're coming from. The um, that they 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 don't want bad for you if they have a different perspective. They see the world in a different way. Yeah. And um, they want to see me in a re-education camp. This is what they want to see. Me. Well, <laughs> that, that, um, so, but but seeing at the core of what they want is a good um, is a good. Uh, they have a good reason for their their perspective it may differ from where, where you're coming from so we, we we'll get we'll get there we'll get there we're not we're not we're not into the whole uh socialism versus communism versus uh democracy stages yet um so we start we all start in beige when you're born this is where you begin uh 0.1 percent of the pop of the adult population is in beige uh the main drive is physical survival um, the focus is on life's basic necessities. Um, baby Tim here is not concerned about world wars, the health of the planet, or the most recent celebrity breakup. Um, he's worried about food, shelter, how am I going to make it through the day? Um, and no matter how intelligent or important anyone is, um, crisis can arise at any time, and survival will become the top priority. Um, think of Tom Hanks in Castaway. He's got a perfectly healthy, normal life going on. And he gets stuck on a deserted island, and he's got to make it. Um, another example we put up last week was the book Hatchet, as another example. Um, and his best friend was a ball because he was coping in any way that he could possibly come up with. That was maybe his way of trying to get to the next stage. Um, center gravity changes for the infant when they realize they're part of something bigger than themselves. Uh, they are in a family. Uh, there's a tribe that is working together to achieve a communal goal. Um, also, the world is full of mystery. Anything is possible, both for good and for evil. Um, population of the world is about 10% of purple. Um, and the drive of, of people who are in that stage is safety with or from the unseen. Um, like I brought up earlier, you're an ancient farmer whose basic understanding of reaping a harvest is dependent on sunshine and rain for your crops to grow. Um, you're, com you're completely reliant on the provision uh, from unseen forces in the sky. Um, if sun and rain are plentiful, you must be doing something to please them. If there is drought, you must have angered them in some way. Um, in your community, there's typically an elder or group of elders who are looked to for guidance, um, but the top dog in, in the room is the spiritual guide, um, the one who can uh, interpret what needs to happen for the unseen forces. Um, this person has the giftedness to communicate with them and appease them, granting health, full stomachs, and safety. Um, we still see this very, this is still very prevalent today in, in groups that we're a part of. Um, think of your family traditions. Uh, think of college fight songs, uh, any superstitions, especially in the sports world. That's, that's where I come from. Um, you can put on rally caps when you need a run. Uh, there's lucky jerseys, anything that'll bring luck or remind your tribe of who they are. Um, Purple's very strong in our church. Um, the two main ones we talked about were communion, baptism, um, having important roles that have consistently been a part of what we do for thousands of years. Um, examples, we talked about uh, communion and baptism for, for uh, religion. Um, Abraham and Moses would have also been examples of the spiritual guides. Um, movies, pretty much anything Disney is going to dig into the magical world. Um, the, uh, the forces, think of, you know, Cinderella having a magical pumpkin take her to a to, uh, um, and Apocalypto um, and The Village were um, two other movies that came out that sort of bring out this uh, worldview. Um, any questions before we start? In no, that was kind of quick, and I'm sorry if you guys were here for the weren't here before. But uh, all right, so uh, we're going to start moving back into the individualistic red. Um, as we've uh, covered in the recap, a child discovers in purple they're part of a small community where they feel safe and their needs are taken care of. Anyone who's spent time around young children can picture those moments of peace and bliss and harmony until something green's put on their plate, or they want something they're not allowed to have, or uh, they've been in a car seat too long, or whatever just happens to strike them in a moment, um, and it puts a child into a frenzy. Um, these are the first glimpses of a child sensing the limitations of a purple center of gravity. Um, maybe I don't want to go along with my tribe. Maybe uh, There's a power that I possess and maybe I don't want to listen to my elders. Um, this is called, uh, another, another name for this is uh, Power Worldview. Yeah. 
Um, so for children, the safe home, uh, the safe haven of home gives them, gives way to a rough and tumble world of playground bullies. Um, the uh, fairy tale heroes of the past are often replaced by action figures, athletes. There's a new perspective on who you want to become. Uh, whereas games in purple have been more about collaboration and uh, and exploration, they may now take on more competitive win lose dynamic. Um, previously in purple. Uh, people were concerned with the threats from the unseen world, as we talked about. Um, red now perceives its pri primary th threat to be what it can see, other humans. Um, circum circumstances now demand raw power to vanquish any adversary. Um, in red, winners make the rules, not because of morality or intellectual superiority, uh, but rather because they have prevailed in the struggle. Might makes right. Is the <coughs> So we're uh, we're up at a, a world population uh, of twenty percent here. And that's worldwide. In the U.S., I would I'd probably estimate it more at about maybe twelve to fifteen percent. Um, the compelling drive for red is power over the adversary. Adversary. Um, so the worldview is a world, the world's a doggy dog place where only the strong survive. Life is tough and dangerous. This gives us the joy of basking in the glory of victory, resolution to stand tough in difficult circumstances, uh, courage, defiance in the face of overwhelming odds, our sense of shame for acting cowardly, humiliation when subjected to indignity, and anger at not being respected. The strengths of red. It, you adapt quickly to change if winning is at stake. Uh, it provides you the drive to win, and uh, you build your build your resolution is building uh, to stand firm. Uh, and, and you know how to enjoy life project pleasures at red. Uh, weaknesses: you see force as the solution to every problem. You exploit people and leave them embittered. Uh, it does not consider long-term consequences. How do I win in this moment? Um, and it tends to dehumanize opponents and to humili humiliate the vanquished. Um, in the church, uh, you see God as helping those who grab the bull by the horns. And you press for in a church uh, a willingness to draw a line in the sand, um, sermons with no-nonsense demands, worship that stirs up resolve, and leaders who are strong, willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any threat in the room or any threat to the group. Um, historically, red many empires began to spring up, and uh, they were led by warrior kings who took what they wanted and were treated like gods. They took lands, they demanded order, and they ruled as they saw fit. Uh, to any tribe that was not equally powerful, especially if you were still purple-centered in the communal magical perspective, um, this would have been a very difficult time. Um, why is this... What is going on? What are, what are you're dealing with? What are the gods? What is the forces, the unseen forces doing to me? Why are these people able to come in? Is this something the unseen forces are doing? Um, if your mentality is might or makes right, however, dominating inferior groups would have been the only logical thing to do. Uh, for a red leader, crushing your foe is the only way to, you, to ensure that you remain on top. Um, this isn't far from the ide ideology of the male lion or gorilla being the dominant leader of the pack. You've, you're constantly watching for who's going to try and upend you and take you off your perch. Um, though this sounds ancient, uh, red centers of gravity still exist in today's world. Uh, currently, think about what, uh, what's going on in Afghanistan with the Taliban coming in. Um, they are coming in with guns blazing. They are the top dog. They're naming the rules. Uh, in this world, they've got to play games to a degree to not be pushed off by a greater power. But they still, the main thing for them is they've got the biggest gun in the room and nobody's, nobody's taking them away from their spot. Um, think about also ISIS in the 2010s. This was another example of red uh, dominating a region. Um, uh, for America, red centers of gravity in groups are more rare. Uh, you see this mainly in settings where there's a combination of, uh, of violence and illegal activity that are going hand in hand from a group setting. Um, such as gangs or anti-government extremist groups. Um, there's also a lot of other examples, but those are those are two where um, you know the 
you're coming in. Your your move that you have is is to have violence to try and topple your foe. Um, so from a biblical religious example, First um, Samuel eight is a great example. I'm going to read some of it for you. Uh, starting in verse 4, uh, 1 Samuel 8. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run his chariots, run before his chariots. And he will appoint him for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your field and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will then take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards, give it to his officers, and he will take your male and female slaves and best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to work. You will take one-tenth of your flocks, and you shall be as slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, who you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. Uh, the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and set a king over them. Samuel then said to the people of Israel, each of you return home. So Israel at this time has been governed by uh, the judges, by Samuel, who is this influential person to to their uh, to Yahweh. And he um, and at this point they're looking around at the world and they're seeing the power players are the ones who have these mighty warrior kings who are dominating the regions, who are having respect, who are feared, and this is what they want. Um, and so that's that's a pretty good example of that. Um, I'll jump to TV and movie, and then I'll ask if you guys have any other ones that jump to mind. Um, William Wallace and Braveheart is a is a pretty good example of this uh, red dynamic. Um, another example that I thought of was the Godfather trilogy. Um, Mind makes right when there's an issue, yeah. they yeah. solve it in in their way. Um, those are the two that kind of stood out to me. Um, any other ideas for uh, scripture or any sort of TV movie? Basically, book? a warlord like warlord. Yeah, Scotland. absolutely, absolutely. In the tiller, uh, absolutely, yeah, and and it's ruled by might. It's not right. on ideology. Um, it's out of fear and respect um, that has been earned. This isn't a movie, but I teach behavior kids. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my kids have emotional mm -hmm. disturbance. So that's like every time you say something that makes me think of my two kids mm -hmm. because since they live in such a horrible household with abuse and stuff, mm -hmm. they, they think that they have to act tough with me right. or at school. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I keep I keep thinking of boxers. Um yeah, because um just the nature of what they do, but also like because they're, they're, I mean, because and they're also they are coached and they're uh, they are conditioned to have this mindset of whatever is in the way to destroy right. without um, and they can't if they because in that moment if they think about consequences they're they're gonna lose absolutely, um, absolutely. So hand in hand combat this is yes that, and that's where you know yeah. you get in, 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 in where like I'll go back like even like take Godfather I. I I'm not going to get into it, but I kind of don't fully agree with that. I think more cartel uh, in terms of the uh, amount of, again, conditioning and, and, and I mean, I'm getting brainwashing uh, that kind of goes uh, into that. Um, where it's just, yeah, some I, people I, it's an absolute, where it's like in the Godfather, get, kind of get into it. Yeah, that's right. There actually is a lot of um, things going on, like in uh, Michael Corleone's head, um, yeah. where he's you know, really questioning 
Yeah. And and some people would put there's there's debate about that. I, yeah. I lean into the red, some people would push you more in the blue, which we'll get into in a moment. But um, <laughs> um but yeah, and that's the thing about this theory. There's there's perspectives and, and back and forth. So so absolutely if you have if you have a perspective, please feel free to share. Yeah. Another area. I don't know which category you want to put this under mm -hmm. TV or movies or whatever, but American politics yep. plays into that red dynamic Absolutely. big time because everybody's, you know, vying for power. Mm -hmm. One political party is vying for power over another one, and, and they forget that everyone is supposed to be about the people, mm -hmm. you know, serving yep. the people and caring for the people, and everybody's in this power struggle. Over yeah, who's in charge? You know? Yeah, and a lot so of the ugly, to... ugly dynamics where it gets yes. <clears throat> it's kind of brutal. That's definitely people moving into a, a red. Yeah, that's the extremes on both sides. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. That's, that's where you go and you take up arms to fight against the the enemy and vanquish them for sure. So I also think about the Book of Judges. Like that is a red book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you and part of the reason why it's so attractive is there are there's so much chaos out there and so much threat. That of course we want a strong leader to we want a Samson right. who can go and kill a bunch of Philistines with a donkey's job. Like right. that's what we want right now. Yeah. Because we feel so unsafe. Right. Um and, it's so and, appealing if you're in a community that is it is being pushed down by yeah. that. You yeah. want to have something you can do to to, to put up against them. You know? yeah. Yeah. Would would you consider all of the the taking over such as you know Babylon and that would that be considered red or? As long as the, the leadership is done in a power way. Well, as we get into blue, we can kind of talk about the, the different dynamics between. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as long as there is, you know, a sword that is is keeping peace um, rather than something larger. Um, I'll throw Samson on here. Um, so we've talked about this in a lot of kind of negative, but oh yeah, please. Um, I'm a little confused, but maybe you've already covered this. As you introduce each one of these different levels, mm -hmm. you're talking it through in childhood terms, but measuring it in adult terms. Yeah. Do children get exposed to all of these levels and then settle on a center so, of gravity when it's an adult? Um, childhood probably gets kind of in here. You're trying to kind of push... Well, I'll get into this a little bit, but schools kind of, and, and a lot of our societies kind of try and push them away from the might makes right into um, there's a bigger picture we need to think about. Um, but yeah, I, all children get here at this okay. at, at this time. Um, where it goes from there is sort of circumstances and dynamics, um, whether there's the problems at home, you know, different things can can determine whether where people kind of settle. From a spiritual perspective, it's good to know all of these things, but we have to keep in mind, we have to keep, for instance, when you spoke about First Samuel 8, you know, you talked about how they wanted a king, right? but God says, I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. You're looking at other nations and you want to imitate what they're doing, right? but the true power is in me. Mm -hmm. And if you follow me, you know, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, when he told them, when Moses told the people, you know, uh, when you go to battle and you see your enemies who are more than you are, and they are out, you know, they outnumber you, they have greater resources than you, <coughs> don't fear them because I will go with you and I will fight for you. Mm -hmm. That's the voice that they should have listened to when David met Goliath. Uh, Saul was terrified because he heard the voice of the giant. He saw the stature of the giant. David wasn't concerned about his stature or his voice. David knew that God can handle this giant. And he had a track record with God, you know. Yeah. So he understood that with God, I don't have to fear this giant. So when we go through all of these dynamics, you know, as a people, as God's people, we have to keep in mind that bottom line is and what we want to do is we want to direct people towards God yeah because that'll help us understand people sure. and it'll help us to respond to people wherever they are in this spiral you know and what you see and I completely agree with that um, what you'll see is the the religious the community mm -hmm. um, church works much easier here than it works in the self-expressive um, a lot of well 
we'll, we'll get into it. I don't, I don't want to, uh, and one thing I, I do want to push on before uh, we talk a lot about red in a very negative sense. There's a, there's a, there's a very good thing that happens to the individual in the red um, experience is you develop um, ego. And I know we think of ego as something that is only negative, but what it develops in a person is the ability to stand up for yourself. If there is something going wrong around you, if you find yourself in a dynamic that is, um, you know, stifling you or uh, is, is creating a negative environment for you that is harming you, having that ability to say, no, I don't need to be a part of this. I have the ability to remove myself from this, maybe not fight against it necessarily, but the mentality, I don't have to be a part of this is something that is very important. And um, if you don't have this red experience, you can be much easily pushed, you know, around. Um, so, so that's something I do want to say. This isn't just a negative one. Um, we see the negative consequences of it um, often, and so that's how I think. And my general reaction is to react negatively to it, but, um, but uh, it's it's not all uh, a negative. So, um, let's get on to blue, um, and this is known as the traditional. Uh, so to continue with the childhood development theme, um, around the same time the child is developing their voice along uh, with their place in the playground pecking order, at home, at their school, um, in their church, their sport team, sports teams, their, uh, their groups that they're a part of, um, they're being taught about a world that is not defined by power or might, but it's defined by principle. Um, we have rules, there's organization, there's structure, or to put it another way, put it another way, there's a story that unites us. Yes. There, there is no I in T. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If there's there, it, it, the the mentality of the red is very useful in sports settings, but it's under a yeah. community, and there's a there's a goal that we have together. Um, I've also heard it described that there is a sacred text that defines who is a part of the new we. Um, for a church, we have the Bible. This is uh, this is the um, the focus of church. The sacred text is the scripture. Um, often for a country, you see it as a constitution or a book of law. Um, those who abide by that text will not act like the red person, um, but will become part of a new community that smooths out the chaos that was. Right. Um, red people under the direction of a blue society are still useful, as those are seen. Uh, those, uh, excuse me, um, as those that are not with us are seen as against us. Um, but it's it's uh, controlled. Yeah, so to speak. Um, this is an enormous step forward for all people who weren't the biggest and the baddest in the red uh, worldview. Um, it's an invitation into a new communal setting where there's peace if you buy into it. Um, so worldwide, we're looking at about 40% of the global population, so a big jump, um, where the compelling drive is to transcend truth and principle. I'll leave the transcend now. That was what truth and principles that gets the idea. Um, worldview, the, the world is governed by timeless principles and eternal absolutes. Um, life is directed by a higher power. So it is simple, it's sensible for us to obey higher authority and to be faithful to the truth. Um, this gives us our sense of eternal values. Um, absolutes and personal non-negotiables, um, justice and fair play, righteous indignation, and, and moral guilt. Uh, strengths of blue uh, provides us with our moral code. Uh, it holds to high and noble ideals. It puts a priority on truth, justice, and integrity. Um, promotes self-discipline and simplicity in lifestyle. Um, and is highly self-sacrificial in the service of what is right. Um, weaknesses of blue. Um, you adapt slowly to change and often fear. It, um, it does not manage moral gray areas well. Um, it can tend towards uh, intellectualism and emotional detachment. Um, it, it often re relies heavily on guilt and fear to motivate people. Um, and it may put rules and policy above people and their needs. Um, in the church, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it sees God as an eternal rewarder of those who stay true to their calling. Um, and it often presses for a church that is committed to changeless, changeless truth, sermons that underscore accountability, 
Um, a worship that is reverent, orderly, and predictable. Um, you know, the, what is the, the old Church of Christ? You have three songs, prayer, yeah. that, that, that mentality. Song, um, songs, yeah, song, 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 prayer, song, 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 prayer, juice, money, song, song, prayer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, wow, that was, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and leaders of the church are often uh, expected to be unquestionable, and have unquestionable integrity, and who keep things under control and on the right path. Uh, when you think of a blue center of gravity, uh, I want you to think of structure as the, the mentality of it. Um, think of military ranks. Everyone knows their place, they know where they're going, they know where they've been, and they know the job that's expected to be performed in this. Um, in red, followers obeyed out of fear, but in blue, they obey out of duty. Anything less than compliance with authority is tantamount to disloyalty. Um, blue may disagree with authority at times, but it will rarely defy it. It reserves defiance only for those moments when its most cherished and fundamental tenets are violated. Um, so politically, what we see is we see warrior kings replaced with presidents, prime mayors. In the business world, blue brings in the age of the sprawling wide, but controlled by an owner who surrounds himself with who are a, a united for, uh, front keeping the, the structure and order in place. Um, Church-wise, uh, I think the easiest way to see this is think of, well, Church of Christ fun very much functions and has functioned under a blue mentality. We've got uh, a text that we want to understand. Uh, we want to fully grasp it so that we can fully uh, follow it and we can, um, you know, remain in, in line with God and what he wants for us. Um, larger, per well, not larger, different perspective Historically, the Catholic Church puts a pope in place, the person who can interpret the sacred, sacred text. At that time, especially, a lot of people couldn't read. So it was up to this person who understands what we, who we are and what we are to be um, and had a lot of power um, in that. Um, so that's a um, kind of a more global, historical look at, at the Blue Church. Um, and, and the wise spiritual guide of purple has been replaced with a wise leader who can interpret scripture. Um, so biblical religious examples, um, like I said, Catholic Church historically, um, and still today. Oh, really? And, 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 uh, and Church of Christ. Um, <laughs> How do you spell that? Because I don't mean to the word. Appreciate it, Tim. Um, TV movie examples that I thought of, uh, Denzel Washington and Remember the Titans. Um, charismatic leader who is bringing together chaos and is focusing it on a goal. Um, I'll just put Remember the Titans on me. Most of the sports movies. <laughs> yeah, sports and also uh, military movies. Uh, Tom Hanks and Saving Private Ryan. Once again, he is getting troops who are divided, who don't want to go get this guy, um, who we are going to do this. There is uh, order that we are going to have, and it will direct us towards our quest. What about like, yeah. like Sister Act? <laughs> there's, okay, so we're getting, into, we're getting into phases where there's going to be so many examples. Um, so yeah, there's, there's going to be so many ways. Um, uh, what did I say? Oh, uh, Not a movie, but it's kind of like the HR world and the, you know, interpreting the handbook and how does this apply to yep. the employees and all that kind of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Compliance. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just put HR as another example. And depending on how it's written, if it's written well, mm -hmm. then it doesn't leave much room for interpretation. Yeah. Or it's too. And uh, that's good because that will empower others to hopefully follow it without you know, having to constantly be reaching out to the charge to get right. information. <laughs> Any other biblical religious examples for blue? Um, I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of years of history, so um, I say that, yeah. That. I think about the, like, the transition that happened in the first century for the Jewish religion, right? <laughs> That where the temple's destroyed, there is no, there's not really an institutional structure anymore. And so what happens is everything becomes about synagogue. And where we be, where where they became 
like these centers of learning about Torah, right? Like it is very Torah centered in a way that it wasn't necessarily prior yeah. to that. And certainly, um, every time they were when they were in Babylon, when they are yeah. over, when they are in settings that are there is a rule book that we follow. Um, when they're coming back to Israel, you've got a lot of people coming from a lot of perspectives, and how are we going to put this all together? Yeah. Um, and and that's um, what is our what is our story? What is our text? And and that's a big piece of it is you know story. <clears throat> this is what unites people is a story. And when when you lose track of that story, um, some of the chaos that's happening, we'll we'll get more into um, what's come along since then. But when when you when a society loses track of what its story is, who we are, then you know chaos can come in a lot of different directions. But as long as people are united around who we are, why we are, um, what is our rule book, what is our when there's a disagreement on what that is. Um, like Ukraine right now, yeah. fighting for their country. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. That communal mentality was also displayed in the early church in the book of Acts. Yeah. You know, on the day of Pentecost, we had people from all over came. Mm -hmm. And then in Acts chapter 6 or 7, where he's talking about, you know, uh, how do we care for these Hebrew widows? You know, we got people from all over. So this is how we care for them. For, you know, we will care for them. Community, right? You get together. We'll, you know, put our pool our resources together, and we will provide for them. Right. That community mentality. Absolutely. Yeah. And that that's where something like that mentality works in a way that if if they came together, right. and each person is like, no, I I have a way that I want to do this, and I've got the biggest sword in the room, so I'm going to say what we're going to do, and we're going to do it. That doesn't. That's not going to breed community. That's not going to bring you know. Need would have been provided for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so that's what I've got for today. Um, let's, any questions? Let's, let's cover. Anybody unsettled by anything, confused about anything? Um, I just want to make sure I leave plenty of opportunity. I think on the blue, it's interesting about, you talked about, um, being strict and, and including the, or, or two different things. Um, if the rules are too tight, then they don't leave room for that human component that you mentioned kind of early on in the blue part, yeah. which again, my world HR, you know, if it's, if, if it's too tight, you, people can't be people. Mm -hmm. And I think there tends to be sometimes a reliance on the rules to handle it all yeah. without having to think <clears throat> or without having to, um, show grace or um, consider circumstances or anything like that. Sure. Yeah, that we, we can't, you can't make all the policies for all the things to, con to cover everything that might happen ever. Sure. So I think that's interesting. Yeah. And, and we'll get into the next, the next week, next week and, and a new individual push that, that, that occurred. Um, but uh I hope this has been helpful. I hope you got something out of it, and we'll keep we'll keep moving next week. Um, I appreciate y'all being here. I'm gonna pray this out real quick, and then we'll head over to worship. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, this this church. Thank you for the people here. Um, I ask that you would would guide us, lead us as we go on about our weeks, and our days. The people that we surround ourselves with help us to uh, embrace people with love. <coughs> Help us to uh, share you and and, uh, and and look for opportunities to live out your mission for us in this life. Um, we are so thankful for everything you do for us. Uh, take care of us, and uh, it's your now, right? Amen.